I'm one of the uh, Vasco guys at Methodist and the program director uh, at Methodist. Um, so I'm going to kick off with, with radiation safety, uh, which is a very, very important issue. Honestly, I take it very, very seriously. We teach the fellows. Actually, we do, it, we do two sessions uh, twice a year on radiation safety, uh, one with me, one with the radiation safety officer. Um, how many of you guys had an official radiation safety talk? Okay. And how many had to take an exam and pass it before they can start using the fluoroscopy machine? Really? Okay. Um, and then how about like, do you guys do like one-on-one -on -one session how to use the, your, either your mobile unit or your uh, fixed hybrid unit? Have you guys had one-on-one? -on -one? No? I see some heads shaking, so. I mean, I, I think honestly that's very important that you guys do that. Um, So, um, I mean, so honestly, you should take this, you know, you know, as serious as your, your vascular education as far as, you know, how, how to do open endovascular surgery, because this is a lifelong commitment for you guys, right? And uh, I'm not sure if you guys, uh, some of you guys seen the video with Dr. Diedrich, we're just talking to Dr. Silva about it. I mean, if you haven't, uh, you should go on YouTube and see it. Um, and honestly, we're doing more endo than open these days, and we're doing more complex endo, right? I mean, and I'm sure probably all of you guys are involved with fenestrated and branched endograft, and you know, and those actually require more, uh, you know, and snorkel and stuff. So those actually require quite a bit of uh, radiation exposure. One thing I advise you in there now, and also when you go and practice, actually to know who your um, radiation safety officer, uh, know who he is, uh, meet with them, um, you know, try to have some sessions with the, with the radiation safety officer, and have them, you know, come to the OR, make sure the OR is safe. Uh, you know, I can tell, you know, and one thing I noticed when I uh, came over to Methodist, they don't do any of the, they don't use, even use the drapes um, uh, to protect themselves from, from the scatter from radiation. So, uh, and like I said, and engage in some of these um, uh, lectures on radiation safety. And, you know, some states actually is going to mandate, uh, I think some started, I know Texas is about to do that, like some, you have to pass a test, actually, radiation safety test before you, uh, before you can actually go, uh, move on uh, and start using x-ray. And you're gonna start seeing more and more actually uh, on your exam, on your uh, qualifying exam, you can see some, some, um, some questions on, uh, on radiation safety. So if you break, if you break the, um, the radiation safety, you can break it based on ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. And the ionizing radiation, is that, that's the one that we worry about. You know, that's the one that's gonna cause problems. The non-ionizing radiation is like the ultrasound and the MRI. It's actually safer than the, than the other ones. Um, so basically, X-ray consists of a, multi of a multitude of individual bundles of radiation, which we call photons. And the X-ray photons are basically pure energy. They have no mass, and, and they basically are structure equivalent to a visible light. So most, most of them actually pass through the body, right? When you're doing your X-ray, most of them actually pass through the body. Um, and, um, but some photos are scattered. And this is actually what affects us, the operator, are the scatter. And I'll show you some pictures on that. Um, so like I said, most of them, they actually pass through the patient. So, so this is what's going to hurt us, is the scatter. That's what's going to hurt us. So most of it will actually go through. So you guys know the II, right? Image intensifier. So, so where's the source, here or here? It's so on the bottom, right? And then this is, and you can flip it, but then you have more scatter on top. So most of the scatter actually comes here from the bottom. Okay, that's more, more so, so you know there's a drape that runs on the side. Have you guys seen that? Make sure that's there, okay? So that's what the most of the scatter, that's what's gonna hurt you, okay? Is the scatter, okay? Most of it actually goes through the patient. So, um, and obviously, um, um, you know, you have to wear, the, I mean, make sure you wear your thyroid shield, make sure you wear your, you know, your um, uh, aprons, and make sure you wear your uh, badge. I can tell you how many fellows, they're proud that they are, you know, they give it back to the radiation safety officer and it has zero. That's not, I mean, actually, that's not right. And actually, you know, some of the fellows, I, I put them, you know, I threatened to put them on professional probation because, I mean, that's really a serious issue and they need to take it seriously. Um, so let's talk about, um, um, what happens really with the um, uh, with the some of the medical hazards? So, some of it's you know you guys heard about the risk of cancer, you know, uh, you know uh, brain. Now we're hearing a lot of like brain cancer, cancer, thyroid, especially like on the on the left side for right-sided operator, uh, skin damage, cataracts. I don't know if you guys also wear your lead um, uh, glasses too. So cataract, cataract is a huge issue for us. 
um, and um, and obviously for for during pregnancy. So uh, and then it's a, it's a, there's a, uh, and I'll talk about something called stochastic uh, uh, effect and deterministic effect. But usually, it's, think of it as a lifelong issue. So it's going to be cumulative over the years. Okay. And mitosis phase is the most sensitive to radiation induced replication impairment. And obviously, the uh, immature cells are the more radio sensitive, right? Uh, because you know they're replicating, so they're more um, uh, more chance um, to be uh, um, um, damaged by the free radicals. And the highly differentiated, you know, postmitotic cells are the insensitive, like some of the fat and and fat, and, and fat cells. But we're seeing, you know, now actually we're seeing quite a bit more of uh, brain brain tumor with uh, with radiation safety. So this is the business side. Think of it. So think of. Uh, deterministic uh, uh, effect is that if you have a higher dose, you're going to have a worse burn, skin burn. Okay, think of it that way. Now, stochastic effect, whether you get a thousand or two thousand or three thousand, whatever the dose to give you cancer, it's cancer, right? So it doesn't matter whether you get. So that's the difference between the two. So deterministic, you're going to get the worse skin burn if you have a higher higher dose. Um, so. Um, uh, so the, usually most, most people talk about the uh, absorbed dose. That's a, some, some of the stuff that we actually get, you, you get uh, reported of the machine and the air karma. These are the things that you actually um, <clears throat> get, get reported. So, um, so the, uh, and, and we usually use either gray or most of them we use actually milligray. You know, that's if you guys notice like, you know, after like procedure, you, you can see how much the flow of time. Now the flow of time, it doesn't reflect really how much how much radiation because if you're doing leg is different than you're doing a belly, right? So you're gonna have much uh, higher scatter and ex and radiation exposure if you're in belly versus leg. Leg actually has the least um, uh, amount of radiation because you know you can culminate. And we'll talk about how stuff you can do to reduce your radiation. Uh, so uh, so most most what we mostly use is we move to use the gray, which is equal to 100 rad and 100 rems. Um, So, um, so these are the, we talked a little bit about the imaging component. Uh, so the source and the image intensifier, and then you have the grid we're on, um, um, at the bottom of the image intensifier, and you have your monitor, obviously. Uh, and then you have the culmination. And do you know what does the culmination do? What, why, why do you guys use culmination? So let's say, so let's say, think about like uh, when we're cannulating the gate, for example. I'll use that as a perfect example. So when you're cannulating the gate, and sometimes you don't know, are you anterior, posterior, what are you in relation to the gate, right? So we play with the eye, right? You move it LAO, RAO, so you can see the gate of the, uh, uh, for the EVAR limb. And actually, when you go in oblique, and I'll show you some picture, that's actually increase your radiation dose. So oblique actually you increase the scatter for you, so, and, and also for the patient, obviously. So, but increase it for you. So you don't need to see the whole picture, right? All you're interested is in the gate, Right, and the tip of the catheter. So if you just culminate sideways, up and down, and you just focus on it, because sometimes you magnify so you can see better, but even if you culminate, the image gets much better. You have less radiation, okay, sent to the patient, and it's less scatter to you. So um, obviously the, 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 there's uh, something called the ALARA, which is as low as reasonably achievable. So. Um, you know, I know if when you first start using the, uh, the, C, the uh, uh, hybrid room or the mobile C-arm, you know, we tend to keep our foot on it, and then you're talking, you're attending, and your foot is still on the pedal. So I know it's going to be a habit, but that's one thing you really need to minimize, um, you know, um, try to focus on both and try to minimize your time of exposure. And then also maximize your distance. So, uh, like, for example, the foot pedal, I'm sure a lot of you who work, we have actually a, a cordless foot pedal. So actually when I'm doing a DSA, I actually stand in the corner. I bring, I tell everyone. Even then, it's the anesthesiologist. I tell them, just go stand in the corner, we'll do the DSA, and then we'll come closer to the table and look at the images. Um, and obviously, max maximize your shielding and, and operate the equipment uh, correctly. So the alarm is that, so everyone's gonna touch the machine should be trained. That's, that's, one, that's one thing. And then basically, you should understand that you wanna try to reduce your radiation exposure to the patient and to yourself. And also, you wanna be safe to the other uh, people around you, you know, I mean, I don't know how many times you'll be working and then you hear like something, a hand is under the drain, be like, and this is your just under the table, in the middle of the scatter, right? And you're like, guys, what are you doing? I mean, you're like getting blasted with radiation. So uh, so whenever we do the radiation safety talk, which we actually we're gonna do one to an anesthesiologist soon, uh, at our institution, these are the ones that also need to be there and, and learn about. And same thing, nurses check in Foley and they're like getting blasted with radiation. So I mean, they, they, so you need to be safe and take that into consideration. Now, if someone walks in the room and they see exercise, they're not wearing apron, I don't care about those. I mean, that's their problem. But, uh, 
So, um, and then, so this is actually, it comes always on your, on your exam. Also, if you, um, 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 you know, uh, so it's an inverse, inverse square law, right? So the distance um, uh, square. So if you go, if you double your distance, you're gonna reduce your exposure uh, uh, four times, right? So, um, uh, so, I mean, remember that. And then if you stand literally like three feet away from the source, I mean, you can potentially don't even have to wear the, the upper, because by the time the scatter reaches you, it's, it's already gone. So these are actually studies done, and that's I want to show that you should, you guys should really use those um, uh, drapes under the table, and, and and also you have a screen, right? So if you have seen that you could, you could use uh, protect yourself up, uh, on top of the table too. So um, when you use it, so so this is the this is the picture so that the, the the operator is standing and is not using anything, and look at the scatter so below the table, okay? This is this is the amount of you, you're exposed. Look when you when you put the shield, none, zero. Right, because it's going to block all the scatter. So please make sure it's there, and you guys are using it. And if you can, I know it's in your system to to put the shield the one on the top, and try kind of to work around it. But if you can also use it, or if you're kind of standing away, you know, you're using sheath and the catheter in your way, just put it, just put it in front of the image intensifier so you can protect yourself from a little bit of scatter also coming from the top. Okay, so that stuff works, hundred percent. Use it. Um, so also the, so people talk about, okay, which, which apron should I get? Should I get the, um, uh, the, uh, the one millimeter thick or the um, uh, 0.5, 0.25? I mean, honestly, I mean, it depends on you. I mean, I have the two piece. I use the 0.5, something in the middle. The one, I thought it was a little bit heavy for me, but they all, as you can see, they all pretty much are protective. Oops. So they're all kind of, uh, you know, protective uh, for you guys. I mean. On the, on the difference, but that's uh, those numbers, the KVP and the uh, milliamps, uh, they're usually now kind of uh, 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 stable in most of the machines. The only thing that you can actually play with is the pulse rate, which actually sometimes I reduce. You know, there's no reason to use a 10 pulse rate on the machine. You can use sometimes 5 or 7.5 and also reduce your radiation exposure. Um, and also, if you're doing DSA, also, you know, cardiology use higher frames. Uh, we don't use it typically for us, so you can reduce it for the DSA for like four, six frames. Um, you know, maximum eight or less, and that will give you enough information when you're uh, doing those. Um, and please wear your badge and uh, report it, send it back. We do it monthly at our institutions, uh, so uh, make sure you guys uh, use it. It's very, very important. Um, there's certain exposure limits. Um, I mean, honestly, if you guys have a good practice, honestly, you don't have to worry about it. Um, it, like, so if you wear your thyroid shield and your apron and you have all the shields on, on the machine, you don't have to worry about it. But there's obviously, there's, you, can, you can look on the website, there's certain like numbers where you can, if you reach in your lifetime, you know, you get an alert from the radiation safety officer and, the, and then some, you know, there'll be some talk about uh, where you, sometimes you have to even stop you from doing some procedure until, um, um, you know, so you, so you can reduce your cumulative radiation dose. So a few things. If you want to remember anything from talk, remember those 10 rules, okay? So, um, so patient size. Obviously, the bigger the patient, the, you're going to you're gonna need to use more radiation. You're going to magnify more to see. So there's going to be higher radiation dose, higher scatter for you. So remember that, okay? So that means in these patients, try to culminate as much as you can. Try to avoid magnification and try to avoid doing oblique, aleo areo on these patients. So the, the tube current and the, like I said, the uh, kilo voltage, you don't have to worry about that. I mean, when I was a fellow, we used to use a lot of uh, C-arm and uh, they used to play a lot of the milliamps and the, and the kilo voltage, but, but that's usually now it's, it's uh, pretty much standard. Uh, and also proximity um, uh, of the X-ray tube to the patient. So um, now obviously you, if most people actually move the table, patient's table up away from the source um, so that it's less radiation for the patient, but that means it's more scatter for you, right? So if the table, if you're standing in front of the table and the table is here, you have less scatter. If the table is up, right, to your chest, you have all this room under the table for scatter, okay? So you might be helping the patient, but remember, you're gonna be getting more scatter yourself. So, uh, so typically, I just use one in, in, in something like in, in the middle, enough for us to operate, you know, comfortably, and then also bring your image, you know, from, from the uh, image intensifier also as close uh, to the patient as possible. Um, this is the, the this is now the image intensifier, the top one. So also bring it closer to the patient. Now this one you reduce the scatter that comes from the top between the patient and the II. 
Now remember, LAO results in 2.6 2 to 6 times more operator dose versus RAO, okay? So when you do, when you do an oblique shot, you, you know, you're basically going to be blasting your stuff with scatter, okay? And also more radiation to the patient. Also, if you magnify, uh, you know, hitting the button three, four times, think about it. I mean, yeah, you'll get better images, but also you're going to be blasting yourself and the patient with radiation. So use it as, as you need it. And then also we talked a little bit about the grid. So, um, so let me ask you, if this is, if this is the I, I, this is the, the source, the II, so you have an oblique, is it better to stand behind it or in front of it? In front? Why? So let's say, let's say if you, um, so, so you have, your, you have your patient, okay, and you have your source, where you guys think? So you better stand away in, on the, on the C shape, because right, all the scatter is actually going and pointing that way. So, so uh, think, think about that too, when you're, you know, if you're watching, not operating, or if you're, and you're on the other side of the table. Um, and then next up, we talked about using that combination, Obviously, you, we talk about using the shield, but most important, step on the floor only when you need it. That's the most important thing uh, for you guys. Um, you know, I'm just going to show you some pictures now. I mean, obviously, we have better equipment. Even even the mobile units are now, now you have less and less uh, radiation um, uh, with them, uh, with the radiation risk with these, or you have less less exposure to radiation with the newer machine. Uh, this is a dozer where basically gives you on time. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard it, but gives you on time um, um, uh, dose. I'm just going to show you some pictures on patients we, you know, after uh, focused. Uh, now, the good thing for us is that when you, we're not, you know, like for example, when the cardiology doing procedure, they kind of focus on the heart. So even they go LAO, but they're still in the one spot. So they have more likely to cause damage to the skin. For us, even like, for example, when doing EVA, you kind of move the table. So you kind of you spread the radiation on the patient. So you don't. We don't see as many skin burns as we, um, um, as uh, maybe some of the cardiologists might see. Anyway, that's some pictures. This patient ended up getting, getting skin graft. Um, anyway, I think I'm gonna, this is just basically a summary how to, how to uh, uh, reduce it. So do you guys have any questions, concerns? No? Take it seriously. I think that you might start the simple.